exciting. En tal yeah. <laughs> uh, I think we're live. I I think we're live. Okay. So yeah. this had some technical difficulties, but we managed. <laughs> Hello everyone. <laughs> I hope we're live. And if anything is a problem, please just tell us. Um, you can write in the chat and we can see it. And I'm just gonna double check if I can see the chat. Um, I'm double checking the chat, so. Yeah, you're double checking the chat. Good. I have it right here so I can see it, yeah. Perfect. Um, hello everyone, my name is Natalia Batista and this is Magnolia. Oh, wait, Sofa. I forgot to mute the... Oh. There we go. Okay. I did a mute on YouTube, so... Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, because <laughs> we, we had some te <laughs> technical difficulties with, uh, with sound in too many places at the same time. But I mm. think we're live now. Let's see if we're live. Um, yeah, people are saying hi in the chat. That's pretty good. Yay. So it seems like we were live. Um, my name is Natalia Batista. I'm a manga artist uh, from Sweden, just like Fofo. And uh, we're going to speak in English um, most of the time. We're going to try at least. Um, like, <laughs> okay, so just a disclaimer. Bear with us. We are not English by... Uh, uh, what do you know? What do you say? Yeah, mother t our mother tongue is not English. Uh, Tofo, do you want yes, to... Swedish. <laughs> yes, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, sure. My name is Magnolia, uh, but my pen name is uh, Tofuo. And yeah, I'm from Sweden, and I make the webcomic Uriah on Webtoon, uh, which is a horror comic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and, and my name is Natalia Batista, I'm the creator of Sword Princess Amaltea. Uh, we have links in the description, so if you are interested in reading uh, Uriah, remember it's from 15 years plus. Uh, we recommend it if you're a little bit older, there's a lot of blood in it um, mm -hmm. and scary stuff. Um, so yeah, it's a really good comic, go, go read it. Uh, and my project is Sword Princess Amaltea, the visual novel. So right now I'm doing a visual novel in anime style. Uh, it's done. Um, but today we're gonna do something else, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to draw live. Yeah, and live. And you have your down here. Uh, you have your yeah. um, uh, iPad. Yeah. Do, do you want to say what what kind of program are you using and what kind of tools are you? I'm using? using. Yeah, I'm using Clip Studio Paint on an iPad with with an Apple pen. Um, I think it works just as well as a as a Cintiq, and it's portable so you can like take it everywhere if you are on the go on if you're on the train or sitting in sitting in bed <laughs> it's very comfortable mm -hmm. um, I also have one and I I also think it's a really good one um, and it's tragically made me a digital artist I, I was so proud of being an analog artist using my my steel nibs I usually paint with these uh, uh, these nibs let's see if I can show you like these kind of uh, pen nibs. Uh, I usually paint and draw with these, but I haven't used this. Okay, I used this actually the other day, but before that I hadn't used it in one year because I do all my comics now on my iPad. And that's a little bit tragic, but I hope to get back to my inking at some point. But today... You're so good at inking, I think you will oh, catch up. Thank really you. Oh, <laughs> well, it's... Um, it's oh, you're wrong. You, yeah. you have already started. Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I was sneaking. So yeah, what are we gonna do today, Mange? Tell us. Yeah, we are going to draw each other's uh, characters. Mm -hmm. Um, and that would be exciting because we have quite different art styles. Yeah. So I'm just curious, who are you going to draw? Uh, I'm gonna draw Natalie, of course. That, that's that's yeah. one of my favorites. <laughs> uh, and I also like um. Uh, I mean the the whole complexion. I'm gonna see if I can do it because right now I'm doing it mm -hmm. analog So I have these uh, uh, Copic Shao here that I'm gonna use and I hope I can make uh, Natalie justice with this <laughs> <laughs> But please bear with me because I, I am not a pro with Copics. Um, it's still a learning process for me uh, And you're gonna draw Amaltea, right? Yeah, yeah yeah, so, I might yeah. do a little twist to it. Um, I want to draw her, but I'm considering to like draw her in maybe 
in a modern setting with sportswear. Wow. Because I want to draw her biceps. <laughs> oh, that would be so cool. That would be so cool. Okay, I'm gonna do my best to just... Uh... The thing is, uh, I have a little bit of an upper hand here because I used to be your colorist uh, on Uriah. Yeah. So I remember uh, your character, but it's gonna you be interesting her. to see you <laughs> draw Amaltea. Have you, you have never drawn yeah. Amaltea? Uh, I have drawn her, uh, some fan art, some sketches, but oh. never a finished drawing. Yeah. Um, Did I see those be... sketches though? Have you showed them to me? I don't think so. <gasps> now the secret is out. The secret is out. <laughs> <laughs> There's secret fan art that, <laughs> that I never got to see. <laughs> the secret fan art. I think I made some fan art like four years ago. It was the first year in the comic art school. Yeah, I was working on a surprise fan art for you, but I never finished it. Wow, something got in the way, but there oh was a surprise there that I never didn't happened. Notice. I didn't notice. <laughs> this is so exciting. Um, if you find them, please let me see them. <laughs> I would love to see yes, them. Yes, of course. <laughs> and yeah, that's that's uh, mostly because I liked your style back then, so I'd like to see how much it's changed as well. Um, I like your style now as well, but it's I mean it's. Uh, it's it's fun it's to go back. What? Yeah, it's always fun to go back and look at. I mean, your your style has changed too. I think mm. from like five years ago. Yeah. So if you have any questions, everybody, just write in the chat and we'll answer them as soon as we can. Yeah. Uh, and also, if you find any te technical difficulties, if you hear Magnolia twice, for example, just tell us because <laughs> that's the thing we had a problem with. Like we had an echo, yeah. <laughs> an echo thing happening, but it's gonna be yeah. fun. Okay, so I'm using uh, these kind of steel nibs, uh, or not steel nibs. I'm using a, a like a mechanical pen with green leaves. Uh, so these are. Uh, it's because uh, when I draw with these, um, and then I can. I uh, ink with uh, these kind of fine lines on top um, it's much easier to actually it's it's a really it's easier to erase I think it's, it looks better when I erase it uh, so I'm gonna draw it with these first and then I'm gonna use the fine liners and then I'm gonna use the copper ones Ooh. yeah this is gonna be fun I never tried copics well, well I tried copics but I never like uh, really invested in them or ever like tried properly i've been drawing digitally most of the time do, do you but want, I want to, to draw more traditionally do you want to try yeah it? i want to uh absolutely that would be fun yeah. <laughs> i would like to see you do that we actually had a plan in notebook studio uh because we're both part of part of notebook studio uh, yeah, mm. that's why you're here for the Nosby Studio Live. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course, that's why there's a logo up here. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, we were talking about in Nosby Studio to do a book because we have done two guidebooks, uh, one about how to create characters and one about how to um, make comics. Uh, and the one about making mm. characters is really popular in Sweden. So far, it's only been published in Sweden. We really wish that we could publish them internationally as well. Um, but um, it hasn't happened so far. Um, but yeah, so the plan is that uh, we wanted to make a book about how to color at some point, how to do coloring mm -hmm. and how to do color comics. Because right now, uh, you, Magnolia, is working a lot with color comics. Um, and mm -hmm. because of webtoons, so many comics are right now being done in color. And the internet is really making that a, a big possibility that you can use color and um, I mean, I think, for example, Uriah would not have been the same comic if it was in black and white. Um, no, I don't think so, too. No. Um, not to spoil too much, but there's a lot of blood. <laughs> <laughs> and blood is red. Yeah, you a lot need... of that would, be, uh, that would be a weird. Lot of that would disappear in like, black and white. Yeah. Because when you ink, you can sort of like censor a lot of things with just black. Mm -hmm. And a lot of manga does that, especially gory manga. Yeah. But you can't do that if it's in color. You have to draw draw yeah. the stuff. <laughs> exactly. It's a. I mean, the the whole point of uh, of uh, your comic is very much the effect of the red, because you use red not only as blood, but also as an effect on characters when the characters are 
are scared or things are happening in the comic. So that would be really weird to have it in, uh, to have it uh, in in black and white because I I think I personally think the red is so important to your comic. Um, mm, thank you. <laughs> mm, so I, I I'm glad you did it in in the uh, in color. Uh, it's it's very effectful. It's gonna thank be interesting. you. It was an adjustment though. Yeah. Um, because you had done because... uh, you you had done Paracycle uh, on webtoons in black and white before. Right? Yes, um, I used to do like mainly black and white comics before. Sometimes I tried some colors, but I never like really. Black and white was my thing. Mm -hmm. So when I started with Uriah, I suddenly had to color everything, and it was a, an adjustment because in manga they ca you can have like a white background mm -hmm. without it feeling too empty. Yeah. You can add some like gradients and, and stuff like that. And you can do it in color comics too, of course, but I didn't like how it looked. I still, it looked empty to me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I think I, I have found a style now that it works. Would you say, uh, uh, um, one question, was it uh, your decision or uh, was it a um, uh, requirement in the competition that you entered with uh, Uriah with? Um, was it a requirement that it had to be in color? I don't remember. I think I just felt like, okay, I'm going to make something in color for change. And then I couldn't change back. Oh, it's <laughs> but weird. I don't remember I... if it was a requirement. I don't. I think I hear you twice again. I think there's an echo now. Dun dun dun. Maybe I'm speaking too loud. Maybe that's... No? <laughs> okay, if, if you... Uh, viewers have an echo as well from Magnolia. Just tell us, and we're gonna try to fix it. Um, yeah. I uh, okay. Uh, I noticed I I haven't been following the chat. <laughs> Sorry. Mm, what? Oh, over there. Um, so we have some comments. Um, the manga school and squad is back. Oh, there's people here from our own school. Um, should we talk a little bit about that? Uh, tell them because I think there's a lot of people who are not uh from the school, but. I, it seems like a lot of you are from Manga Skolan. <laughs> but uh, Magnolia, do you want to tell about uh, Manga Skolan? What was that? Talk about it. Okay, so Manga Skolan was a course, me uh, and uh, Natalia, and also Elise Rosbay. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a course 2018. Yeah. Was it 18 or 19? 18, 18 I yeah. think. Yes. Yeah. And so the students got to create their own comics um, almost, um, in six months and we were like their editors we taught them how to like write a script how to create characters and how to uh, develop their story and it was like 10 pages mm -hmm. um, At not most. more so we yeah. focused on, yeah so we focused on these 10 pages for these six months uh, six months uh, I think uh, we still have an echo on your voice, though. Still uh, have an echo? Yeah. Okay. Wait. And it's weird, because it came now, the past five minutes. It's really weird. Yeah, it's weird. It's, it's like your iPad really wants to be part of this, <laughs> the, the conversation. Mm. <laughs> it's like, it no, you can't be life. part of the conversation. You have to stay <laughs> quiet. <laughs> so if you in the chat find any echoes, just tell us. Um, so we have uh, people talking about the class reunion <laughs> in the comments here. Uh, so yeah, there was, uh, I think, 20 people uh, joined that course. Sadly, we couldn't do it again um, because the course was part of the school, um, the school that I used to work at, and the school decided not to um, organize the, the whole uh, course again, this Manga School Learning course. But we really hope that we can maybe revive it in some other way in the future. We'll see. We, uh, we can't promise anything. And right now, both uh, Manga and I is super busy with other stuff. Um, so we really want to help you um, with questions and with your work. So if you have any questions, just join our live streams and ask questions here. I think that's the best way to meet us, especially now during the Corona time. Um, but maybe we have some other people. Um, okay, so uh, we have one person in the chat saying, please saying, uh, I don't hear an echo. Perfect. So no echo. Awesome. Really good. So maybe it's just for me. Maybe my, my uh, uh, OBS doesn't, my program doesn't pick it up. You changed the whole picture. 
Yeah, I wasn't happy with it. <laughs> wow, quickly. <laughs> um, I can't do that because I am doing working analog. Um, okay, so uh, if you have any questions, write them in the chat. Uh, do we have people from other countries? Uh, do we have some people from uh, from outside of Sweden? Please write in the chat. We would like to see if we have some other people here as well. That would be fun. Mm -hmm. So uh, you are in the second season of Uriah, right? Yeah, okay. How far into the second season? Uh, we're like halfway there. Ooh. So I think the season will end in October. Mm -hmm. Think. Okay, that's... Uh... Yeah. So, halfway so right is... now it's yeah. going to be up to... 72 episodes if i remember correctly and then wow. there will be more episodes when season three starts but 52 it should be 52 mm -hmm. no 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 72 72 72 yeah is that the same length as the first one uh, no it's actually longer the so, first season yeah. was 31 episodes this one will be 40 so i got nine more episodes but uh okay so but were the episodes the same length? The same number of... I mean, you, you said that the first episodes were really long. Oh, okay. you speak, oh I thought you meant the season. I uh, know uh, the first episode epi uh, in the first season was really long, right? Yeah, they, they are ex uh, a little more longer because they launch comics with three episodes. Mm -hmm. And they want these three episodes to like really catch the reader. So, so it's usually a lot of time yeah. is spent on those three episodes, and then naturally the episodes becomes a little shorter because of the um, um, schedule. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how much time you worked on the first episode? Like how many months before, before um, from the day that you got a yes from uh, from uh, Webtoon to the day that you launched? How do you do? You remember how much time that was? Oh wow. Um, so the first episode I drew much earlier on because it was a contest, so I, like it was my entry. Mm -hmm. And it took a lot of time because at the time I was also working with Paracycle. And that probably took me a month, I think, to make that episode. And then uh, when Webtoon was interested and wanted to work with me, um, we spent almost, I think, two months on those three episodes. So, yeah. Wow. So it's quite a long time, but it's yeah. also a long time because your um, update schedule hasn't started yet. Mm -hmm. So the work process is a, a lot slower before yeah. you start with that. Yeah. Once the comic is up, that's where the stress starts. <laughs> So, then you only have one week. Yeah. But have like do they say to you to have more buffer than that? Like do they tell you to have a buffer? Um or... Oh yeah, they definitely want the creators to have a buffer. Um because it's stressful for them as well if mm -hmm. you don't have a buffer. So Yeah. Yeah, at the end of season one, my poor editor, um her name was Andy. <laughs> Wait, I sent the comic, like the completed yeah, my previous ed editor. I sent the episode like three hours before it was like uh, going up, and she always, always like, okay, it's okay, and she did all the edits, sent back to me. I sh did the changes, and then I like sent sent it back to her so sh so she could upload it. Yeah. But this was like a stress for her as well to like always know that okay, I have to when Tofuru sends this in, I have to like take it immediately. Yeah. And so wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't make Nat make Natalie happy. So Natalie is a little bit distressed in my picture. <laughs> she looks beautiful. I love how you draw eyes. It's it's a little bit different. And she, and, and she has that little like frown that she has. I like yeah, that. Yeah, this is this is very distressed, Natalie. I, it would be weird to see Natalie like happy go lucky. I don't know, Genki. <laughs> that would be so weird. <laughs> okay, you can't spoil, but yeah, I think, um, yeah, 
because I haven't read up to the latest episode, so please don't tell me anything. Um, I've been too busy oh. with my Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, how's the Kickstarter going? Um, it's a little bit slow right now, to be honest. Um, I think, like, I have a lot of uh, thoughts about what is happening. I think Corona is affecting uh, the Kickstarter, um, but I, I don't want to blame it, like, because it could be just me failing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it could be something else. Um, but okay, it's really weird. Do you have like? Because it's glitches on your on your iPad. It's really it glitches in the in the picture. Like, do you, have you added grays? No. No. Uh, so no. Could you just zoom in and zoom out from the picture a little bit? It's really weird. On your... Okay, Ooh. there's some. I there's... can see it now. I think it's my internet. Ah, oh, so it's some glitches. But okay, so you. Yeah, sorry people, you have to live with the fact that internet is not up to speed every time. <laughs> but we're, yeah, it's gonna be good. Yeah, but the Kickstarter is... I'll it's, keep my eye on it. Yeah, the Kickstarter is, I think it's uh, still good because um, at this moment we are still uh, three weeks from it being finished on the dot. I think it's actually exactly three weeks. And three weeks, it's a lot of time. So I think a lot of things can happen in the Kickstarter. Uh, right now mm. we actually get we managed to get to the point where because um, we have stretch goals and one of the stretch goals that I really look forward to was the one that we just passed uh, a couple of days ago uh, where the game the game is about Sword Princess of Maltea and Ocean after the manga so this is a continuation after the manga like a um, but it's it's a standalone sequel, so you don't have to read the manga before you, you play the game, because we have an introduction where you get introduced to the world and the characters. Um, but Ooh, I didn't know that. That's good. Mm? So it's a, it's a, I think it's good for people who, who have no interest in the manga, but would like to just play the game uh, and play an adventure um, visual novel game with an anime-esque style. So we have a lot of animation as well, simple animations where uh, for example, it's mm. called parallax scrolling, where you can have one part of the background moving uh, and the other one moving a little bit slower, so it looks like it's a depth, like you get to the depth in the picture. They have that in anime as well a lot, um, so that's that's what we're using. And people are like, wow, there's so much animation! I'm like, yeah, but that's just code. <laughs> okay, I say it's just code, <laughs> but my coders say it's a lot of work. Because <laughs> there's two, uh, uh, Joachim and, uh, not no speeds Joachim, but another guy who's called Joachim, um, and Marcus, they're the ones from uh, Senpai Media Group who is doing the game with me. Anyway, the stretch goal that we just managed to get to is um, uh, we added, we will add a bonus chapter with Amaltea's horse as the main character. Yay! And that's gonna be so much fun! Like, okay, yeah. I can spoil a little bit. Um, but yes, yes, yes. yes uh, this is a tiny, it's not a big spoiler, but this side story with a horse, I'm really looking forward because the game in itself is a, an adventure um, story. So it's not a dating simulator like most of uh, visual novels, but the horse side story will be a dating simulator with just horses. Uh, <laughs> so it's gonna be Palifax, the uh, Amaltea's horse, um, dating. Different, you 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 can play as Hal Palifax while uh, he goes around dating different horses in the stables. So that's gonna be a side story that I'm really looking forward. And all the there's not gonna be voice actors. It's gonna be horse sounds. Um, oh <laughs> yes, <laughs> so it's gonna be so much fun. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be like a, a fun side story that I really look forward to. To, to making and and drawing, uh, so that's gonna be really really fun to make. I think I'm looking forward to it so much. You should link the Kickstarter in the description. It is. There is a link in the description, both to Ooh. Uriah and to the Kickstarter. So if you want to go check out the Kickstarter oh. and help us out, please. The next goal is um, if we reach, uh, I think it's just ten more people. Um, we reach one hundred backers. And that's when I'm gonna open up for add-ons and uh, for um, uh, new reward levels. Uh, and some of the new reward levels will be that you can become a character in the game. Uh, so we had that reward before and um, I took away some of them because I wanted to keep them So for, for this moment. And it's gonna be released more of those spots. So if you want to become a character in the game, um, this is a good chance. Uh, it's gonna re be really, really fun. Yeah. 
I, I would love to um, draw people into the game. That's going to be really, really fun. So it's now I have such a small yeah. idea too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like, ooh, I want that. <laughs> I want to yeah. be the game. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a, it's a fun way to um, you as the the player can feel like, okay, I was part not only of uh, supporting the game, but I actually became a part of the game. Um, so mm. there's some spots still if you want to um, become a background character. And there's also some spots uh, if you want to become a, a non-speaking character. I think we still have some spots for that. But uh, the, one, the spots that are if you want to be a character that has lines, which is a character that actually interacts with uh, Amaltea or Ocean, um, those spots are going to be opened up as soon as we get to 100 backers. So if you want to support it, go there and just back for like one dollar. That's enough. And you're just part of the, the game and you can see uh, when we open up for new spots for characters or other fun stuff. One thing, for example, one reward that I got a suggestion from one of the backers and I decided, yes, what the hell, let's do it. Um, it's uh, I'm going to try to make an uh, a anime figurine of Amaltea. Because right now you can do pretty easy uh, 3D printing. So my plan is actually to get myself a 3D printer, which I've been wishing for for like two years. And my boyfriend as well, so he's going to play with it as well. <laughs> We're going to buy a 3D printer and I'm going to learn this program called ZBrush Core, I think it's called. Uh, which is a free CAD program. Um, he already knows it a little bit, so I'm going to learn it. And then I'm going to 3D model Amaltea and print it and spray it and paint it and and that's gonna be one of the rewards. It's gonna be. Uh, Is it just one? Uh, no, it's gonna be. I'm gonna make a several of them. Uh, so when I've done the, the the hard part for me is the learning this CAD program, learning to do the 3D program. Uh, yeah. So that's gonna be the hardest part. Uh, so when I've actually learned that and made the 3D uh, model uh, uh, model for Amaltea, it's just gonna be printing. Um, so I'm gonna make at least, I think, twenty of them. I hope. And uh, yeah, so that's also one of the... Want one. <laughs> you want one? <laughs> nice. Yes, I'm going to get one. <laughs> yeah, um, there's going to be add-ons as well. So that's going to be one add-on. If you just want the game and the figurine, you can go and just uh, follow the, the campaign right now. And then as soon as we get to 100 backers, I'm going to open up for these add-ons. Um, and then you can just pay for the figurine as well. So you get the figurine and the game and that's it. You can just, just decide which you want and you don't have to take all of the uh, rewards. Uh, and that's also one thing I like about Kickstarters and, and crowdfunding is that you can make like unique uh, limited edition or like exclusive stuff um, that only the backers and only your fans want. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. It's that's also like very dedicated that they're going to make small figurines that as well. But to be honest, I don't do it for the backers, I do it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a thing that I really wanted to make at some point. And like it's um, the biggest issue for me have been that 3D printers have been so uh, bad in quality that you get all these stripes. You see the plastic stripes. Yeah. It looks really bad, but I've seen newer like not that expensive 3D printers that do really good stuff. Like you don't see mm -hmm. any stripes. Um, so the 3D printers are like, they're getting really, really good. Some of them. Um, I can probably do a review in one future show when, when I have my 3D printer, I'm going to do a, a careful research before I buy my, uh, the one I want. Um, so let's, uh, let's get back to that, uh, later on. Let's see if we yeah, have I'd some hear uh, more about that. Have we got some questions? Any questions here? Um, no. I don't know where my pointer is. There. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> so worth it. Uh, Palafax Nightgale, a girlfriend. Yeah. Or boyfriend. Or, I don't know, friend, friend. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, there might be friends. <laughs> well, you decide. That's a fun thing with a dating sim, right? Uh, you can decide which ones to... It's going to be fun because um, uh, the whole visual novel thing is quite new to me. Um, but the the basics for the Amaltea game is more of an adventure kind of storytelling. So I'm going to look forward to making 
more of a relationship building um, storytelling, which is what you have in dating sims. Would you like to make mm. a visual novel, Maya? Yeah, I really, I really want to make one one day. Maybe you can teach me. Yes, <laughs> yes. And maybe you can do it with the Senpai Media Group. Maybe they want to work more with us Ooh. later. If I do a good yeah. job, if our game <laughs> goes well, then yeah. <laughs> I what what so. kind of visual I novel would you like? I can already tell how popular the Kickstarter is, so... Yeah, yeah, we... Um, People I love think... about me, yeah, so... I'd be surprised if it, if it didn't go well. Yeah, it's. I think it's, um, it's interesting, because uh, actually, when I did some research, uh, a lot of websites said, oh, uh, visual novels is out of style, it's not popular in America anymore, and then other websites said, oh, this is the newest uh, visual novels, and I found several podcasts about visual novels, for example, so I don't know if it's out of style or not, but uh, either way, it's a really, really, really fun medium, I think. It's really close to comics, mm. uh, but also uh, close More to... More interactive. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, like it, it's making... I talked about this in our latest uh, um, live stream, which you can watch if you go to our YouTube channel, which you're already on. If you go to the YouTube channel, you find the other live streams we have. Um, and I talked about there with uh, uh, Lin, our other um, member. Uh, we have more members in Nosley Studio. And Lin and I talked about the game. Uh, so Lin had, Lin had played the game, um, the, the demo, the free demo that is up. Um, and we talked about the fact that doing a manuscript for visual novels is actually like doing a manuscript for comics. But um, when you do a manuscript for a comic, like you know that, uh, Manga, that you have to decide what's going to happen. Like, you have to decide what is happening. Like, the, there's only one way to show the story. Oh, we lost you. No, we lost Mange. Uh, do you hear me, Mange? Hello. Do you hear me? Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Stop here. There you go. It oh, went okay. silent and I was like, what? Oh, okay. The Discord was acting up. But now we're hey, back. Discord again. <laughs> <laughs> Discord is such a little... Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, anyway. So yeah, the thing is with uh, visual novels, uh, the manuscript, if you're going to write a manuscript for visual novel, the difference between a visual novel manuscript and a comic manuscript is that when you make a comic manuscript, like you know, Mange, uh, that you have to decide exactly what's going to happen and your editor is going to say, no, you can have this and this instead. And then you're going to like fight it out. In, when you do a visual novel, you can have everything happen because you can just have s multiple storylines. Like, what if the character says this? Yeah, then this happened. And what if the character says this? And then this happened. And then you have multiple storylines and you don't have to decide exactly what's going to happen because many things might happen. Um, and yeah. that's what I like about the, the writing the storylines for, uh, for a visual novel. You don't have to pick and choose. Like, the, you, you should make the player pick and choose uh, what's going to yeah, happen. Really isn't it a lot of like extra work as well because mm. you have to like write so many different uh, so many different timelines but i would say that's the fun part i would say that's actually what uh, what i think is uh, uh, the most enjoyable about doing a manuscript for a, a visual novel uh, is the fact that you it's a little bit of uh, math but i think it's also a little bit of um, uh, creativity you have to think about um, like which path story paths uh, might meet or which story path might be just uh, um, uh, one thing that happens or might maybe ends in a, a dead end well you can have a dead end but maybe it just goes in circles sometimes or sometimes you find new characters or new tools or um, or something so for example in the demo without spoiling um, uh, I'd like to say that in the demo you have um, for example uh, one spot when which is actually the biggest thing for the game, where Amaltea and Ossian split up. Um, and that's when the, the player has to decide which to play, and the other character that the player doesn't decide to play as uh, is played by the uh, AI, the computer. Um, which means whatever you decided, what the decisions you made before they split up is gonna affect what the character you're not playing as does. Do you get it? So it's like, um, yeah. so that was a little bit tricky to make it possible, like different possibilities, but that's also what I kind of like. Um, so it was the, the good thing is to have someone to talk to and to like, 
uh, bounce ideas off with so the coders which has they have made a, a um, visual novel before a celestial crossing if you go to steam or uh, there's uh, celestial crossing is available there um, and and they the good thing was they could they could give me pointers in how to write the manuscript in a good way so it fits um, kind of uh, visual novel style um, but that was um, that it was tricky but it's really fun when you get into it when you understand how to um, how to make visual novels uh, manuscripts so yeah I could definitely mm. tell you uh, or teach you one day when you want to do it um, yeah I'm looking forward to it it also sounds like very educational like for writing overall yeah it's it's definitely um, because it, yeah. it forces you to like uh, forces you to think um, mm -hmm. like you, you might not have a preference how the characters will react or what they will say yeah but with a visual novel you have to like figure out several um, reactions mm -hmm. several things to say that it that it they can pick yeah. so yeah do you think um, a Uriah would fit as a visual novel or there would they could be a Uriah visual novel mm. <laughs> hard question huh yeah it's such a long story so I guess um no <laughs> perhaps Parasycle. Oh, it's oh. Shorter, and I think that would be that exciting. That would really fit, I think. I think a Parasycle uh, visual novel would actually even elevate the story a little bit. Um, because if you haven't read Parasycle, everybody, uh, it's still online, right? On Webtoon. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So you go there and read it if you haven't read it. It's really good. Um, but to, to without spoiling, uh, I mean, the story behind Para Paracycle is quite a big world. It's like, mm -hmm. if you compare it with um, with uh, Uriah, which is more about unique characters in a, uh, a, a setting that is reminding us of our, our own world, uh, like it feels like a not too uh, distant past of Sweden uh, in Uriah. It's not a fantasy mm -hmm. world. But in, in Paracycle, it's actually a, um, like a dystopian future kind of world. Mm -hmm. um, it's more about the, the, the world that they live in more than the characters. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, uh, I, that's why I think you could easily make a, um, I'm sorry, I don't have the right colors for your, for uh, Natalie's. <laughs> I, I have it's really... okay, she looks beautiful. I'm having a very hard time with Amaltea's eyes. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's let's I'm try just to like complain about all this. Sparky eyes. But <laughs> let's see if I, I might be able to save this with another color here. Um this is too dark. Maybe this one. Oh, we got a question. Okay. Um Oh, I think it's a Kickstarter question. Okay. It says, is there special prices you donate for special stuff to get, or do you decide yourself what to donate and get the things? Um, so there is uh, uh, several, several levels you can decide on, but as soon as we have this 100 backers, we're going to open up for add-ons, and then you can pledge more. You can give more money, and then you're going to get something for that you wished for from the add-ons. Uh, it's a little bit tricky to explain right now, but um, the best thing is just to hop on and, and be a backer. And when we open up for that uh, that level, it's going to be much easier to see what what I mean. Uh, I'm so sorry, Natalie's face is looking really... B I'm sorry, this is... I hate my <laughs> right now. I'm sorry, I, I hope I can save this. Oh no. I'm so sorry. Yeah, so... um, Yeah, there's going to be some add-ons later on in the in the care in the i think i can save this right now natalie looks like an orange i'm sorry <laughs> but i think i can save this i i believe in myself I she got some sun yay <laughs> what she got some sun yeah well the reason is the reason why why she looks so weird is because she has no other colors so i'm gonna add other colors and then hopefully she's not gonna look this weird I hope so. 
and I really hope that n no one in the <laughs> in the chat is a really good copy art <laughs> artist because they would be <laughs> no don't do that no like commenting like a football supporter no don't use that pen use the other one no. Natalia I can definitely hear that I hear you just you know I hear you I'm struggling with her like outfit and armor. I need references. Yeah, Let's go ahead. <laughs> oh. Hmm. oh yeah, she doesn't have her. She has her hair like she doesn't have it behind her ears. But I want to draw it like behind her ears. <laughs> Comment this. That's why I love the digital drawing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no go going back this here. No, <laughs> no going back this. <laughs> it's forward, forward, forward. <laughs> let's see if I can make this better. I'll I'll say like this. Okay, let's say that uh, what you see on the screen is really weird. Um, I can see if I can change the colors of my uh, camera because I think it's the camera that makes it look like an orange. Uh, <laughs> let's say that. <laughs> Um, oh no, that wasn't good. Um, let's see if we can just change it a little bit. And just, uh, yeah, that's better, I think. Now it looks more like what it looks like in reality. That's much better. Oh yeah, that's good. Okay, <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> I think it's a little bit better now. Um, so yeah, it was the camera, everybody, not my fault. <laughs> let's say that at least. Okay, so. Yeah, uh, give us your questions if you have any. Uh, we are, we're gonna continue for at least fifteen more minutes, I think. Mm. One more, it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's this fun. You, I want to do this more time. Yeah, well, we can continue a little bit more if you want to, because I have nothing else to do, and it's mostly you who have deadlines. Um, so that's, and yeah, my campaign I is standing still it. anyway. <laughs> so, ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what color of her? Hair is a little bit blue, purple ish. Yeah, or? her hair is actually black. Yeah, but, but you have a little bit of color I picked. Picked yeah. all like that. They're a little tinted with blue or purple. Hmm. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna mess. There's this actually up. a big discussion going on if her hair is black or if it's purple. Oh. Because people are doing fan arts and they don't know, kinda. Yeah. Uh huh. And it's it's black because yeah, it's just a style cho choice. Yeah, yeah. I think it's better also with the because you have so much other stuff that is black. So her, for example, her her shirt is also blackish, but they are more black grayish. Um, mm. So I think that's a good idea. Like, okay, I'm just gonna put up a lot of pens here and see what I can do. <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> Uh, scary. I don't want to do this. Okay, uh, let's go for it. Oh no. Okay, I'm gonna save this. I promise you, I'm gonna save this. It looks <laughs> very blue right now. I'm definitely. Oh, we got another question here. Yeah? Uh, when is the game coming out? Uh, the Will game. it be released right after the Kickstarter or? No, it's uh, right after the Kickstarter we're gonna make the game. So that's why you can become a character because a lot of the characters hasn't been made yet. Hasn't been made yet. Uh -huh. um, so we're gonna make the game until next summer. Or we're gonna release it in May uh, next year. And that's gonna be really... Uh, and one of the stretch goals for the whole campaign was actually to, um, to make if we reached, I think it was 30k sec, um, uh, which is about $3,000, uh, we would make uh, live streams during the progression of the game where we would show you, like, show the backers only, um, which is now, if you want to see those live streams during the coming year, where we're going to talk about um, uh, how to make visual novels, how we've made our visual novel, we're going to talk about uh, we're gonna show you exclusive clips from the game, um, show you your characters and stuff like that. Um, if you want to see that, uh, you definitely need to be a backer because you can of course skip the campaign and just uh, just follow the uh, the progression outside. But then you won't have those live streams and you won't 
be able to follow the progression up close. We might even start a Discord. I haven't decided yet. Um, it depends a little bit on how much work. But I like Discord, so um, I'll probably uh, create one for the backers only, uh, where you can follow the progression and see like inside stuff inside of the pro uh, process, kind of. Yeah. So the game is gonna come out two thousand twenty-one. Nice. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> nice. Yes. It's uh, I especially hope that we can reach uh, and not the next level, but the level after that, the stretch goal after that, where I will make a, a um, animated intro to the whole game. That's gonna be really fun. What pro program are you going to use? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, I really don't know. Can you animate I'm... in Clip? Um, you can animate in in Clip Studio Paint, I think. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I have animated in uh, Photoshop before, and that kind of worked. Um, I would probably consider something else, but if nothing else, I can animate in uh, in Photoshop. I have some small clips like from 2016 on my Instagram. So if you want to see some of my uh, tries at uh, animation, you can see it over there. But this is gonna be a whole different ballgame because I want to make it like. Like a real anim intro with like action scenes and everything. I, I love putting up huge challenges for myself. So yeah, that's gonna be fun. I'm gonna, gonna reach that goal. Yeah, I, I need it. <laughs> I really, really hope so. So right now, um, I think Natalie looks like a trunk from a Dragon Ball Z. Because <laughs> <laughs> the hair is way too blue. Um, I have to save this somehow. I am not sure how. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see if I can save this. It has, it has interesting colors, like the neon art I used to make. Is it? Yeah, maybe I should have done that. Maybe I should have like done everything in like neon pink or something. Like, yeah, this is my style. I'm sorry, I, that's not what you sound like, but I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> like, it's, it could be just an artsy project. I could have done that, but no, I had to go for the real colors. That's that's on me, I guess. That's dedicated. It's uh, it's risky, <laughs> especially because I only have <laughs> usually when you do um, uh, Copic coloring, you need to have like the full sets, and I seriously only have I think maybe a tenth of all the colors that in the Copic sets. Um, one tenth, oh. like ten percent of all the colors. So at this point, I am doomed to fail. Uh, this is, uh, yeah. I just hope I can save this. I think it's gonna be great. Yeah, thank you. Hold on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going with Amante? What? I, I, I must say, I love the angle of her face. I really love it. That oh, kind of like you. peeking over your shoulder. That's so much Amante. I love it. It's really yeah. good. And I think he did a good job with the hair. The hair is tricky because she has so many curls. Oh, she has so much hair. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I love on your Instagram when you post La Maltea with her hair up. Yeah. Yes. That was very pretty. Oh, thank you. <laughs> fan art from that. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, I was thinking that I think it was Elise um, who said that in when we did another live stream about the game. Uh, and she was like, oh, is Amaltea gonna change her hair? I'm like, uh, no, but maybe. <laughs> and then I'm like, how would that look? And then I started drawing it. I was like, this actually looks really good. Why didn't I do this from the beginning? Because, <laughs> yeah. She, <laughs> yeah, she, it, it kind of looked different. But uh, also, um, maybe it was good I didn't do it because I heard from people that it looks a lot like a character from Hunter x Hunter, I think. Um, oh, okay. I, I haven't seen the anime, I so I don't it. know. Yeah, there is a, apparently a character called Shitose, I think, uh, which looks like Amaltea with her hair up. Um, mm. Natalia's cat joins the chat. Have my cat joined? <gasps> <laughs> ah, Shuniko is here. Did you see the cat? Um, yeah, Amaltea looks so cute. Um, Yes, let's this reach that milestone draw. on the Kickstarter uh, for doing a um, uh, intro anime intro. That would be really fun. Um, uh, 
does Trunk have purple or blue hair? Not even Toriyama remembers. And that is actually true. I don't remember if it's... I think it is purple. No, it's blue. I don't know. I don't remember. It's... I think it's purple. I think it's blue. Light blue. Maybe it is well, purple. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, either way, Natalie is looking like Trunk right now. Just so you know. <laughs> Uh, I Google it. It's purple. It's purple. But sometimes it looks blue. Huh. I think it's when they use some filter on uh, in the anime. It looks probably blue. Yeah. Oh, I wish they had more colors. La 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 la. Okay, so this is um, if I th oh now I know. Okay, so Natalie is really angry because someone ha um, poured some bleach on her hair. So <laughs> that's the reason why she's really, really angry right now. Um, that's the reason for her face right now. Just so you know. I have a story for this. <laughs> I have a reason to for this really weird. Like, I'm trying to save this. I'm just putting more and more colors in it. But it looks just more and more like a, like a version of Trunk. <laughs> I don't know. But it's a thing I like. I don't know what it is, but I like um, angry anime faces. Yeah. And it, I love yeah. drawing it. I don't know what it is, but I. Uh, mm. Especially when there's something like... about it I really like. Yeah, it, but it's it's because you. I think it's some drama in it. You immediately want to understand why they're angry or what's, what's in their head. Like characters mm. that are happy, you, you know that they're happy. You understand that feeling. But I mean. The reason to be angry is so many. That's like you mm -hmm. can be angry because someone took your your lunch from the fridge, but you can also be angry because <laughs> someone killed your father. I mean, there's so many reasons to be angry. So uh, yeah, <laughs> very different reasons. Very different reasons. Yeah. Let's see. I'm going to try to make some sparky eyes. See if I can. Nice. If I can manage to have some eyelashes, I mostly see Swedish people in the chat. Um, in the oh. yeah, I think we have thirty six viewers. Uh, yeah. So if if someone I didn't I don't I don't know if I checked if someone wrote if they were from other countries, but if you're from other countries, please just write your country. Or if you're from Oh, we have one from Mexico. That's really cool. Ooh, Hello, Mexico. That's, cool. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> um, yeah. Canada and the United States as well. Oh, cool. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's really nice. It's fun to have you here. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna let go of the hair. I'm gonna just let it rest. No. One more thing. Oh, it kind of looks like silver now, and it's like it has like reflections gold. Yeah. It's like all it's of the colors like right now. What? It's starting to look like a filter. Yeah, let's say that. <laughs> 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 That's a good thing. Um, is it brown eyes? Natalie has brown eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's easy because I have brown. Nice. <laughs> I know I have brown. That's trying to remember Amalthea's eye color right now. Uh, um, is it turquoise? Because mm -hmm. I like the combination of turquoise and orange hair. It's mm. very anime esque ish. Maybe. And I'm a messy artist, so now I have all my pens everywhere. <laughs> but so. Have you? Yeah, I think we've asked this when we had the interview with you a couple of uh, live streams ago. But um, uh, have you a plan of how many more years you're gonna work with Uriah and when you're gonna free yourself and what you're gonna do after Uriah? Have you thought about that? Mm. Yeah, I, like it will be four seasons. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to need two more years to finish it. Mm -hmm. Because now I know how long one season takes to make. Yeah. And the, the following seasons will take a little longer because there will be more episodes. 
so two years and when the Uriah is completed I'm going jumping right back to Paracycle. Oh, so you you really want to continue that one? Mm, I really want to continue. I've, I've changed the plot, plot so much oh. and, and I'm like impatient to yeah start with it. Nice. I'm looking forward to that because I really really like that one. Um, full disclosure is that I used to be a um, uh, to uh, Tofu's uh, uh, teacher at the comic art school and that's where you uh, kind of developed the whole story so I was mm. I saw the the progression of the story as well of how you how you made this like created the story mm. um, so I I'm really glad that you're gonna continue it because I I'm not gonna spoil but there's a lot of really really cool stuff happening in that that world and that story and I really would like to see it happen mm -hmm. like you re I really want you to get you, to those you points. were kind of like my editor the Power Cycle back then yeah yeah that was that was fun um I, I wish you could do do more of that so yeah this we're gonna hopefully have a I hopefully had have will have the chance to do more uh, editorial uh work in yes. the future I think you're going to like the remake even more yeah, you think I think, but I won't spoil anything. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think I think it's better. If I, I think it would be more fun for me if I could read it, not as an editor, but actually as a, as a, a reader. That would be, f I think, more interesting for me. So I'm glad you you probably have, uh, have you already talked to your editors at, maybe you can't say that, but maybe, like, will you do you think that webtoons will pick it up as a original comic um, I'm not sure maybe I'm keeping my expectations low mm. would you like um, it to be an original um, it would be pretty neat but that means I need to change the art it can't oh. be black and white it can't have screen tones it needs to be in vertical scroll oh. so mm. and you want I to go back to black and white okay with that, but I'm not yeah I want to do it in black and white mm. and I think I want a break after Uriah hmm. uh, and a little break from this, <laughs> this schedule that mm -hmm. I have now. Yes, I understand mm. that, definitely. <laughs> uh, like it's, it seems like a really fun thing to, to have some, like have a really, like have a good reason and a financial reason to continue working with a comic, but it also, like it means you can never do anything else, it means you can never like take a break or go on hiatus and just I don't know. Yeah. I've seen you work really, really hard. So yeah, it's it's. I'm impressed. It's a lot of fun. I love it. Um, but there are also times when everyone has those days when you don't want to go to work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Even if you're doing something you really love, you're going to have those th those days as well. Yeah. And it's even like I think it's even more important. So if any of you in the uh, the chef is thinking of uh, applying to webtoon is even more important I think if you're gonna work with someone overseas in another country that you do follow the schedule don't just go ghosting your oh. editors that's really not a good idea um, so I think yeah uh, and you have to be like available 24-7 mm -hmm. I used to be right with my editor around 8 p.m. to midnight wow. because that's when their day starts <coughs> and yeah so that that's a <laughs> that's a time when we are definitely not the most creative i think and maybe some people are no, but they're only watching tv <laughs> yeah it's, it's if you stand up early or if you stand up a normal time like eight or nine um you're still you're very tired at midnight uh yeah I know this, for example, I do uh, every other Wednesday, we do the live stream with Nosebleed um, and with Nosebleed Studio Live and every other Wednesday, like the other ones uh, in between, I do a live stream together with Tokipop, the publisher of Sword Prince and Malteya in America. And we usually do them between 10 and 11 in the evening for, for me here in Sweden, which is, um, I think it's one o'clock to two o'clock in, in America, in LA, where they are. Um, and 
I mean, that's really good for Americans. So it's uh, between one and two for uh, people on the the uh, West Coast. And it's between, I think, three and four in the evening or in the afternoon uh, for the people in the East Coast in America. Uh, because it's for the American audience primarily. But in the end of those episodes, because usually it's me talking and talking about how to make comics. But in the end of those episodes, I am really, really tired. Like, it's like yeah. things are spinning. Um, so I understand why, like, doing, um, I don't know, doing a, um, a chat with your editor at that time and trying to be creative, it's not the easiest thing. Yeah, no, it, it's not. But mm, you get used to it. It's not like I'm talking with them every night. Mm. Um, and I try to keep a pretty strict routine that I wake up. I, mm. I always try to make sure that I start working at 9 a.m., yeah, why? Yeah. I'm not sure. I just I I feel bad if I like sleep to noon. <laughs> okay, so it's it's just a personal thing. It's not. Have you hey, noticed? It's a personal. Thing. Yeah, have you noticed? Like I'm example... usually a lot more alert, and I feel better during the morning hours, mm -hmm. and then at night I start to like slow down. Mm -hmm. I agree and uh, that's what I've noticed if I for example sometimes when I try to sleep in it it really affects my <laughs> health my energy the rest of the day so even just sleeping into maybe that's maybe that's a sign of me getting older I don't know <laughs> but <laughs> maybe it's a sign of age uh, but I noticed that if I sleep in beyond 11 I sometimes get headache like a migraine or same same yeah Really weird. Like sleeping headaches. too much. It's it's a problem when you sleep yeah. too much. <laughs> <laughs> same. I have I have so the weird. same problem. I always especially if you like fall asleep several times mm -hmm. during the morning, like one, two, three, and the third time your head is like, Ugh. yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's like you you think you're giving a body more rest, but in reality the body is screaming for activity almost. Yeah. Question. Uh, Natalie's shirt has this uh, purple and green line. Is the purple closest to the chest or is the green sh closest to the chest? I always forget. The purple is closest to the chest. I think so. So the, is the, is the, yeah. the green is behind and the purple is in, fr in front, towards the front, right? Oh, you, you're talking about the stripes on yeah. the... Yes. The purple is... Uh, it's the closest to the chest. Yeah. And the green is closer to the back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> good. Right. Then I think I remembered right, yes. Perfect. No, this was too dark. Dang. Oh, okay. Failing again. Well, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. I am using Copics, so everybody, I'm doing my best. This is... You're yeah. so fast, though. <laughs> It's that's the thing with doing it by hand. It's since you can't go back. Like I, I've done so oh, many mistakes yeah. already. <laughs> I can't you use can the. <laughs> that's that's one thing with doing uh, stuff uh, not digitally, is that since you can't go back, you actually make things faster. I think. So I think I'm gonna make the shirt a little bit bluish because I don't have the right colors, um, but. Just everybody, the shirt isn't blue, but in, in this version, it's very bluish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can save this. <laughs> Somehow. Like, I love how this whole whole writing drawing session for me has been, how do I save this picture? <laughs> <laughs> like, how do I not m make <laughs> uh, Natalie a bad impression, like a bad impression of Natalie? I don't know. Oh, she looks beautiful. Uh, I'm trying my best to comments. It uh, has nineteen the nineteen minutes. I can't even talk because it's so late. <laughs> uh, we have a uh, oh Jostra is here. Hello Jostra. <laughs> oh. Uh, hello. Look, you ever consider making a comic in the same vertical uh, phone adjuster style as Uriah? Yes, I would like to do that. I think there's Ooh, so many. I want to see that. Yeah, I think there's so many cool. Um, possibilities with having a scroll format um, but 
when I have done, I have put up some stuff on on webtoons, just short, like um, for example, parts of Meow, my manga. But that was not the same because then it was just me cutting up the frames, and that's not at all what I think is the 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 cool thing with the scroll format. Um, so I would have to plan it ahead, like you did, uh, Mange, and like go into depth uh, with like uh, the possibilities. Um, I really would also like to do a, a horror comic. I think that's really good for mm, yeah, yes. yeah. I think that would be really cool. Um, ghosts. I would love to make something with ghosts. Um, I really like the whole concept of ghosts and and the paranormal. So maybe something with that, and I think that could work really well with the with the scroll format as well. Um, so you have to scroll, and you don't know if you want to see the next picture because maybe it's really scary. Um, so I would probably also go for something, uh, fifteen plus like Uriah, not as much, uh, I don't know, arms in pots on the stove ish. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, not to spoil. Yeah, but that's pretty much what Uriah. Yeah, there's an arm in a pot at some point. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, I think. But I would... I don't know. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but I would definitely like to do it. it. Have anyone in the supernatural comics... Yeah, a supernatural comic would be really yeah. good. Um, oh, I want to see that. Yeah, I also... It's because I'm a little bit intrigued by ghosts. Um, I've actually... I've, I've been part of a seance once. Um that was what? yeah that was back when i this is a scary story so i'm gonna tell it to you um well we have a lot of people in the chat so let's continue uh, people just leave when you get tired uh, but we're gonna continue as long as we need to finish the pictures i guess um let me tell yeah, you this. Oh, well i need to i have a deadline so okay. maybe we can like continue for 15 more minutes sounds good should i tell yeah. you my ghost story Yes, I want to hear your ghost story. Okay, so everybody, if you're not up for ghost stories, um, it, is it... Um, it, write in the chat if it's getting too scary and I can quit and I can just tell the story to, to the people who want it later. Um, but okay, so when I went to the comic art school, um, that was before uh, Mange went to the comic art school. Uh, this is in Malmö and this was before they moved. So in the old house when they were before, um, that was an old factory where it used to, back in the 19th century, like a hundred years ago, it used to be a shoe factory. So there used to be like, a, it's a really old building. Um, and one of the windows, the window in the teacher's lounge, um, uh, we could actually enter the teacher lounge because it was just a room with two computers. Um, that room actually, one of the windows um, was facing a Jewish cemetery. Uh, so yeah, that's a good setup, right? So we have the cemetery. We have an old factory building. Um, there had been uh, views of ghosts uh, or um, like experience with supernatural things in the building. For example, one of the most, um, let's see. Uh, oh, people are, are you scared? Oh yeah, uh, no, the, ca the cockle factory is the, the new one. The old one was a shoe factory. So that's really funny because the new one is the ca cocoa factory or chocolate factory. Um, but the old one was a shoe factory. That was back on Industrigatan in, Le in Malmö. Um, and uh, one of my classmates, when I went to school, uh, she was probably the most um, uh, like down to earth, not believing in, in supernatural things. Uh, she had been alone uh, in the building in the evening and she was sitting in her studio uh, area and suddenly she heard someone like um, humming a, su a, a melody in the computer room. So she, she was like, I thought I was alone. So she stood up and went out and no one was there. And there's also been people who were sitting next to a computer, next to one of the doors to the teacher's lounge and the teacher's room. And the door just slowly closed next to them. Like they saw in their, uh, the periphery of their eye, they saw how the door, how the door closed slowly, like, like, and they're like, what? And there's also been viewings of an old man and his dog in this building. So we were like, we have to do a seance. Yeah, we were stupid. I was young. I know you shouldn't do that. So we did one. Um, before the seance, I had brought my tarot uh, cards uh, and I laid out some, some layings and I got 
um, one of the cards was I was asking you can lay out three cards like one two three and one is uh, what has happened uh, one is um, what is happening now and what will happen I think something like that and the one that is what will happen um, it said adventure or fun or um, new possibilities kind of but it had the word adventure um, and this is important because then we did the actual uh, seance in the room for the teachers the teachers lounge the teachers room uh, because that was we were like okay this is where we heard a lot of rumors about this room uh, we should definitely do a seance in here um, and uh, so we first of all we waited we were six people I think five people six people um, we waited until one of them was uh, one of my f uh, not classmate but she went to the class below me I think or two two below me I think um, and she had seen ghosts before and that's why we brought her in because we were like okay she's kind of yeah she knows supernatural stuff so we need her because if she sees something or feels something we can just leave um, so she has a feeling for these things we thought we, we felt that um, and so we entered the room first we put out we open all the windows and shut the lights and we just leave the room and just have the windows open especially the window towards the Jewish cemetery um, uh, yeah my Kohai exactly it was my Kohai Hold up. Um, and uh, so do you you, so you do the spooky stuff with cards and the Ouija board? Yes, the w we had a Ouija board, but we didn't have a Ouija board, so we made one. We just took a piece of paper and made like letters on the paper. Um, and then we used, first we thought of using, so we, we, we closed the door and we let the, like the cold air in. This was in the summer, but we were still cold because it was midnight. So past midnight, we opened the door and we quickly, I had read somewhere that you should put in the open window, you should put um, uh, a lit light uh, because then you can trap the spirits kind of it was I, I don't know how I knew this but it's, I just said we let's do that so we closed the window quickly and we put uh, some uh, candles in the windows in every window and in front of every door uh, to kind of trap the, the, the spirits and then we sat down in, in around a small table uh, three of us uh, was close to the table me and two others no me and four uh, three others um, we were at the table and two of uh, and two other people or one other people were sat sitting next to us uh, not near, near the table and on the table we had put out this homemade Ouija board and we were like oh you should use a glass so we took a glass and just put it upside down and then put our fingers on it and, and we're like could you please like spell it out or come in to us and just talk to us and nothing happened um, and then we said maybe we should do something else maybe we should use something else and someone said a copper coin let's use a copper coin and back then we had copper coins in Sweden um, if you had half of a crown uh, 50 euro, uh, that was copper so we took the copper coin and there's a reason to copper as well because copper leads electricity and electricity first of all we have electricity in our body a little bit and there's electricity in the air and especially in this room we had two computers so we put the coin and then four of us had a finger on the coin and and we were like you can and me and this other girl who was uh, more into like supernatural things and uh, we s both of us only us said you can take the energy from us we said that just right out like just take the energy from us suddenly the coin started moving like it started moving and i know that i didn't pull it and i was like the only who could have pulled it is this girl because it's moving towards this girl and i'm like she she could be a little bit tricky, so maybe she is less tricking us. But at some point, she even lifts her finger and the coins keep moving. And I am the only one who kept my finger on the coin all during that time. And I promise you, I didn't move that coin. So the coin starts moving towards, uh, like in different uh, directions. And it's spelling Aven, which is Advent, like the beginning of adventure. But for us, we thought Aven something. It's also a word in Swedish. So we thought this is also, it means also. And we're like, also what? What? And then it continued. And the thing is, the only person, I was the only one who could have moved the coin. But to be honest, 
I have we had to change when we want shows the coins we made a smaller uh, Ouija board uh, with letters and I didn't do that so I didn't know what the letters were so it at one point the coin turned towards I thought it was it could couldn't spell out Aventyr adventure because I thought that the next letter was on the row the second row but really I didn't see that the next letter was on the third row and it was going towards that letter and stopped on that letter and then people said, is it Aventyr? Is it Adventure? And uh, and then it moved towards yes, a little bit. And then we were like, wow, okay. Um, so it didn't spell out the whole word, just moved towards yes when we asked if it was Aventyr. And then we said, um, who are you? We, were like, we asked, like, who are you? Suddenly, this girl uh, next to me, the, the girl who has a little bit of experience with a Supernatural, she felt like someone was like, like a cold breeze up her back like someone was like moving up her back like the hair just stood up she's like no 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 no. we need to quit this now i think we should just quit this now this is not good i don't feel good so we just stopped everything we just rushed out uh and we just opened the windows again and and, and shut the, all the the um, to let the air, the air out and to let this kind of being out if it was something there um, and we just shut off the candles and we just went out of the room and first of all like I said I could have only me could have been the one who moved the coin but I promise you I didn't move the coin but what I did feel from my finger to the coin I felt like small electricity like small uh, um, I don't know thunder like from some lightning going from my finger to to the the coin it was almost like it was jumping from my my finger um almost and i promise you also i felt in my hand all the way through my finger and up into my the this my hand for like several days it felt like i had elect be electrocuted in my hand it felt like it was like um it really hurt all my joints felt like i had been having having like electricity coming through my finger i don't know that feeling i've never felt that feeling before or after so it was really really weird um so i i've never seen a ghost but i don't know how to explain it i really it's just don't know. very weird yeah but it's really exciting i think ghosts are i believe there might be ghosts i mean i think it's crazy of us to think that there shouldn't that just because we can see it it doesn't exist it's not true we don't see atoms we don't see particles uh we don't see black holes like we can see them if we enhance it but really they don't exist we don't see what's in the black hole and just because we can't see it we can't say it's empty right uh we don't know mm -hmm. There's a lot of things we don't see. Like they have, they there's animals that can see colors we can't see, for example. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my scary. Yeah, I have, I have a hard, <laughs> I have a hard time believing in ghosts. Okay, tell but me. But I love tell the me. concept, and I want to believe in it, but I've never had any experience that can convince me otherwise. Mm. So far. So, but would you like? Would you dare to have a seance? To yeah, yeah. I, mm, I want to do like ghost hunting for sure. <laughs> oh, let's do that together then. That would be really fun. Yeah. Or fun. It would be scary as because I'm really scared of the dark. So I don't know why I am into this, but <laughs> it <laughs> it would be interesting. It would be very interesting. Yeah, it would. So we have some people saying. I have felt the same and seen things. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people have. And and it's like people don't sometimes want to tell others because it sounds like you're a bit crazy. Um, and people say, and that was a really interesting ghost story. Yeah, I like the story. Um, like radio cars outside. Yeah, and like a static sparks. Yeah, that was the, fel the feeling I had from, uh, from my finger to the coin. And especially that... that um, I have never been electrocuted. I've never touched like a fence or anything with electricity. So I don't know exactly how it feels. Maybe I've touched a little bit, like just felt it a little bit, but I haven't like been electrocuted, so I don't know. But I think this feeling I had in my finger was the closest to being uh, electrocuted in my finger. 
and it was so local it was just in my finger that was the weirdest part i think hmm. yeah it's, it's very weird mm. so yeah i'd like to read some ghost stories one day that would yes be i want to read that nice yeah you seem to know your stuff as well like how to ghost hunt <laughs> So, that it would sounds be, like your alley. Yeah, I have actually talked to a friend about we should start a ghost hunting uh, uh, group, but the problem is it's there's a lot of tech that you need, like infrared cameras and those kind of uh, meters that can sense electricity and stuff like that. It's there's a lot of like technical stuff, and I I haven't invested in anything so far, uh, but maybe in the future. Let's see. Um, maybe as a research for a uh, ghost manga would be a good reason <laughs> there is a house uh, in in a, a town where I, close to where i live um that i've been like checking out i'm not gonna tell you where because you shouldn't out uh, all these houses but this house is abandoned really weird abandoned house so i would love to go there and do a seance one day but abandoned houses are cool. I really, I'm really intrigued by them. Yeah. I think, yeah. Me too. I'm like very scared of it. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, like I would pee my pants. I would. <laughs> but I also, but, but also like I'm so scared of it that I choose not to believe in it. Uh huh. So kind of like protecting yourself. Yeah, I think I think so. I think a lot of people do. I think we're very scared animal creatures we get scared easily. creatures <laughs> i also think that the thing with ghosts is that it reminds of, us of death so i think a lot of people are scared just because it's it's not a pleasant thought um to know that someone is dead uh and still still you can feel them or you can see them i think that's also a big issue i think for some mm. so i'm getting close to done here i think yeah i'm not definitely not done but i try to color her fringe a little nice um, that's cute oh i like it <laughs> thank you. so much <laughs> it's really good i know you're, sorry, you I have think, um, yeah yeah sorry no i think i know you have a really busy schedule but please keep this for, for the future and just finish it at some point, when, if you have the of chance. Of course. <laughs> I would really love to. <laughs> Whoa, when the... Little... The interesting thing is when, when this kind of uh, lagging thing happens on the screen, um, yeah. it, the character almost looks like Colin. Uh, no, it uh, looks like um, uh, Soundless. It's the fringe, I think, yeah. and the size of the eyes. Yes, yes, nose. yes. <laughs> it does. <laughs> He's cosplaying. Cosplaying? Yeah, Thomas is cosplaying Am Amaltea. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, going to Nacon or something. Oh, I wish that Tomless had that, had the possibility to be oh. happy. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil. I'm seeing the glitch right here now, and I, that's odd because it looks like it's picking up my wallpaper. What? <laughs> like it's like the app is see through or something. Yeah, this is yeah. the first time um, I'm streaming with an iPad. Yeah, so I think it's really cool that it works so well. Um, so we're I think we're gonna finish the stream soon. Uh, if you have any yeah. more questions that we maybe missed, uh, just write in the chat and we can finish them in a couple of minutes. I think we have. I think uh, any interesting. I think the concept of ghost goes together a bit with the question around what happens after death. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's what we're supposed to know it. Um, we're not supposed to know it. Yeah, exactly. It's it's a it's a little bit like if there is a higher power or like an um like a destiny. Uh, humans are not destined to know the ending of their like what's happening next and there's so many different theories of what happens after death that's also one thing that would be really really cool to make a comic about um like there's been so many stories about it and and i think there's as many stories as there is humans on this earth uh, because i think everybody have their own unique theory of what happens after death i think um, mm. 
and that would also be cool a cool theme to talk about so everybody i just want to tell you that my picture is really pretty in reality but on the screen it looks like uh, <laughs> i don't know um something from a, a 90s manga uh gone through a bad uh, scanner or something uh, but it looks <laughs> really good in reality i promise you it looks really good i think it looks really good <laughs> Um, I can send you, after Corona and there's no risk of uh, diseases, I'm going to send you this one. So I'm going to keep this one so I can Yay! send it to you so you can have it. Uh, but I don't do I don't dare to do more with a shirt right now because I don't have the right colors. I might have to invest in more Copics right now. <laughs> it finishes. You're very good with the Copics. Like how you add the shadows and how it blends. It's not me. It's the um, I I don't want to push a certain uh, um, product, but actually the Copic Shao you just have to hold it and it does a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> so uh, I really like the pens. It's look because the magic pen. Yeah, the Copic Shaos are like a brush. It looks like like a brush like this, and when you when you drag it on the paper, it gets this kind of smudgy effect. So it's a really easy to make um, clean uh, shades. Um, and also you can have this kind of blender. So this is not a blender, but blenders are like completely white. Uh, this one is a little bit dirty, but you can actually smooth out uh, some areas with these kind of blending tools. Um, and that's what I like with the Copic. So, I mean, it is very forgiving. It is very forgiving. There is there is a lot of chances of regret <laughs> when you work with Copics, I think. Oh no. Oh no. I d oh, oh no. <laughs> I, I smudged something. No. Okay. Oh, I didn't I'm not going to touch it. this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not see it anymore. I, yeah, she, You're touching it right now. <laughs> I know. Um, so she has a, a birthmark or some dirt on her face. I'm going to see if I can save this later. Anyway, if if anyone has a good uh, any more questions, I don't see any more questions. So do you want to say Hello. something more, um, Mange, before we quit? Yeah. So... You said you you weren't happy with the with the photo, or, or with the with the drawing. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the stream right now, and man, my my iPad is glitching so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun because there's a mouth there and there's an eye there and so many colors. <laughs> talking about we are talking about ghost and this happens. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. <laughs> That's creepy. It's the ghost. The iPad has been possessed. But the cool thing is really though that. I mean, the glitches almost makes it an artwork in itself, because there's blues and there's yellows and there's purple. It looks so weird right now. I, I, um... <laughs> it's really, it's really fun though. <laughs> I don't think I'm using my iPad next time. <laughs> no, maybe not. We have to test this a little bit. Maybe it's the app. You have your special app for this. Maybe there's other apps. So we'll try that. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's my internet. Maybe. Well. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for being part of the stream. I think we'll uh, finish uh, the stream now. Uh, it's going to be too long if we don't finish soon. And you have <laughs> to go to bed as well. And I have to go to bed because we're old and we need to sleep. <laughs> or I'm old. Yeah. You're young. <laughs> I am old too. <laughs> no, you are 10 in, years younger than me. <laughs> in my soul. In my soul. No, in your soul. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Let's check this.